word. The word bites like a fish. Shall I throw it back, free, arrowing to that sea where thoughts lash tail and fin? Or shall I pull it in to rhyme upon a dish? The hawk. He will watch the hawk with an indifferent eye or pitifully. Nor on those eagles that so feared him now will strain his brow. Weapons men use, stone, sling, and strong-thewed bow, he will not know. This aristocrat, superb of all instinct, with death close linked, had paced the enormous cloud, almost had won war on the sun. Till now, like Icarus, mid-ocean drowned, hands, wings are found. Not to you I sighed. Not to you I sighed. No, not a word. We climbed together. Any feeling was formed with the hills. It was like trees, unheard and monumental sign of country peace. But next day, stumbling, panting up dark stairs, rushing in room and door flung wide, I knew, oh, empty walls, book carcasses, blank chairs, all splintered in my head and cried for you. And I can never be great man. And I can never be great man. This known great one has weakness. To friends is most remarkable for weakness. His ill-tempered meals, dislike of being contradicted. His only real pleasure, fishing in ponds. His only real wish, forgetting. To advance from friends to the composite self, Central eye is surrounded by eye eating, eye loving, eye angry, eye excreting, and the great eye planted in him has nothing to do with all these, can never claim its true place, resting in the forehead and calm in his gaze. The great eye is an unfortunate intruder quarrelling with eye-tiring and eye-sleeping and all those other eyes who long for we dying. Beethoven's Death Mask I imagine him still with heavy brow, huge, black, with bent head and falling hair, he ploughs the landscape. His face is this hanging mask transfigured, this mask of death which the white lights make stare. I see the thick hands clasped, the scarecrow coat, the light strike upwards at the holes for eyes, the beasts squat in that mouth whose opening is the hollow opening of an organ pipe. There the wind sings and the harsh longing cries. He moves across my vision like a ship. What else is iron but he? The fields divide and heaving are changing waters of the sea. He is prisoned, masked, shut off from being, life, like a fountain, he sees leap outside. Yet in that head there twists the roaring cloud and coils as in a shell the roaring wave. The damp leaves whisper, bending to the rain. The April rises in him, chokes his lungs, and climbs the torturing passage of his brain.
Then the drums move away, the distance shows. Now cloud-hid peaks are bared, the mystic one horizons haze as the blue incense heaven, peace, peace. Then splitting skull and dream there comes, blotting our lights, the trumpeter, the sun, My parents. My parents kept me from children who were rough, who threw words like stones and who wore torn clothes. Their thighs showed through rags. They ran in the street and climbed cliffs and stripped by the country streams. I feared more than tigers, their muscles like iron, their jerking hands and their knees tight on my arms. I feared the salt coarse pointing of those boys who copied my lisp behind me on the road. They were lithe. They sprang out behind hedges like dogs to bark at my world. They threw mud while I looked the other way, pretending to smile. I longed to forgive them, but they never smiled. What I expected. What I expected was thunder, fighting, long struggles with men, and climbing. After continual straining, I should grow strong. Then the rocks would shake, and I rest long. What I had not foreseen was the gradual day weakening the will, leaking the brightness away, the lack of good to touch, the fading of body and soul, smoke before wind, corrupt, unsubstantial. The wearing of time and the watching of cripples pass with limbs shaped like questions in their odd twist the pulverous grief melting the bones with pity, the sick falling from earth, these I could not foresee. Expecting always some brightness to hold in trust, some final innocence exempt from dust, that hanging solid would dangle through all, like the created poem or the faceted crystal.